Right, this is the historic carving department of the Sitting Guilds of London Art School. I've got three things I want to say about it. We've been on this site since 1879, so that's a long and unbroken tradition of teaching wood carving and stone carving and sculpture over all that period. But it's not a fixed tradition, it's a dynamic tradition, and we keep it that way by employing practicing professionals to teach on the courses. Everybody who teaches has their own workshop, their own career as a carver and a maker. And lastly, small is beautiful. It's a very small institution. We all know one another very well. It's a genuine, creative, artistic, and craft community. So this is a um, commission for Southwark Cathedral and it's a portrait um, of Wayne Marquez who is a uh, police officer who responded to the London Bridge terrorist attacks and uh, they were looking for a design submissions for a portrait to go on the cathedral and this was someone that I wanted to um, portray and, and put on the building and uh, he, he survived the, the attack um, defending civilians but was stabbed several times so he has a scar on his forehead here. And so uh, I'm working from a clay model that I made initially into now into the stone, which will eventually go on the building. So this is a uh, coffee table uh, formed out of heraldic dolphins. Uh, so there's two dolphins wrapping around each other and with a glass top. And uh, I started off with, I started off making a small uh, clay maquette and some, a set of drawings. And then I worked it up into a bigger model. And finally, I made it twice the size in the wood. And it was made of lots of small chunks of wood laminated together uh, and then shaped into the big size. And then now I'm carving in the detail. At the moment I'm creating a design for Southwark Cathedral. Uh, earlier in the year we did a competition to replace the corbel heads that are disintegrating on the side of Southwark Cathedral. Uh, I was chosen to collaborate with the Cathedral School. Uh, they sent me drawings of their creations and I've interpreted them into my own version of a corbel head. Uh, the ideas behind it were uh, abundance, the market, uh, the uh, vibrancy of the people in the area and um, I've tried to encompass them all into my design uh, which is basically a basket overflowing with produce. Um, so I'm carving a uh, ornamental wreath of hops. Um, I'm from Kent and I'm obsessed with hops and I wanted to kind of explore the, the theme of hops so um, I decided to carve it in sweet chestnut and um, mainly because hop poles used to be kind of growing up sweet chestnut and I wanted to explore it. It looks a bit like oak um, and so I started by getting a lot of reference and doing a lot of drawing from, from real hops and um, uh, then made a, a three-dimensional uh, model which I kind of use alongside the carving so that really helped to inform the carving as I go along really just to get the depths um, and uh, just 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 to help like, kind of the planes and just to get, get, get everything kind of working really but um, as time went on and put the model to one side and then just focused on um, the carving itself and uh, just at the stages now of, of finishing in, finishing up, kind of doing the final cuts, getting the shadows and um, uh, yeah, just finishing it off, which is quite exciting, so. So 
So, um, yeah, it's been amazing to see this project take shape. I would never have thought I'd be able to um, do something like this when I first started the course. But looking back at the first year projects, it's amazing to see kind of the, the progression. Um, one of the big factors of that is, is the tutor support. Um, they really help you to see things you wouldn't have kind of seen and to help kind of the raise the level of your carving. Um, and it, it's very much one-to-one -one on, a, on a daily basis. So I think that's quite a special part of the, of the course. So here is my restoration project. So this is a um, undulating leaf boss, which I'm, which is from uh, King's College, Cambridge, and um, I've uh, got this piece, which is really weathered and broken up, and I've put wax on it to um, have a simulation of what it would look like originally, and um, I'm so then when I'm copying it this new bit, I can then um, know exactly how to carve it. Uh, behind me I've got a transcription that I did. Um, I copied a etching of Jonah and the Whale, which I've got here, which is um, a 2D thing, which I've then made into a 3D relief panel. I did it in clay and then I cast it um, in cement and tinted it green to come up with this. Piece. This, I'm making a copy of this um, this panel, which is from a, a cathedral, I think Lincoln Cathedral. This is a copy of the original as well, and it's um, it's this pattern called Stiff Leaf. So I'm repeating it in oak, but I'm doing a slightly different variation. I'm piercing the background so the light will come through, which I think will be nice variation on it. I'm absolutely loving this course. Yeah, it's possibly the best decision I've ever made in my career, or my, well, my new career, hopefully. Um, it couldn't really be further from what I was doing before, sitting at a computer all day long, surrounded by technology, and it's like a breath of fresh air. I'm surrounded by beautiful things, interesting people, and I guess in my old world it was the opposite I was mentally um, drained with nothing to show for it at the end of the day so one of the things I love best about this course is that it's not just carving we have a lot of related subjects so one of the projects we just did before um, moving on to this one is this um, transcription project which is part of our clay modeling course so we're currently in the process of making some half-size clay maquettes in order to turn these into larger sizes in stone. Um, these are going to be the signs of the zodiac. We've all picked a, a sign of the zodiac and um, these are going to be double the size in stone and they're all going to be fixed together into an arch. Um, so we're just working on our models to figure out what we're going to carve into the stone. Well, I did uh, conservation and restoration in Spain, in Bilbao, so I really wanted to do something related with sculpture, and I thought wood would be nice, so yeah, I decided to come to England. They gave me this drawing from the fishmongers, and then I designed uh, my own kind of uh, drawing and I showed the client and he liked it. So then I did a model in clay and then uh, when the volumes were right I did the carving in lime wood and now I'm finishing we're adding the gesso and then this is going to be gilded and painted with the colors of uh, College of Arms.
as part of my second year, I am carving this and I have chosen to carve it in walnut and I'm drawing it and then for my drawing I'm going to transfer it onto wood and then carve it. I'm in my second year, I'm copying this gothic window frame from a rude screen um, in English oak. Um, following on from this gothic band I did earlier in the year. Hello, my name's Boris and I'm a third year wood carver at the art school. And um, I'm currently carving a pair of ornamental brackets in oak based on the ones you see here in this fireplace. Um, before that, I carved and gilded this, this picture frame and it's a commission that came through the art school for a museum in Durham, the Bose Museum, and they've got a portrait by Van Dyck. And um, the portrait was recently discovered and restored, so it didn't have a frame. And so that's where the commission came from. And what they wanted was an original design, my own design, but in a historic style. So I picked the auricular style, the English 17th century auricular style. And um, so I designed it myself, but I looked at uh, um, examples in museums of, of real examples of, of these frames and I carved it and gilded, as you can see. Uh, so this is my um, final year project, uh, I'm in third year, and this is a, a Romanesque um, a relief sculpture that I've designed from historical um, examples and different elements that I work together into a kind of composition. It's uh, carved in a French limestone, and uh, it's the central figure is Samson the Lion, which is a <coughs> motif used a lot in Romanesque sculpture, and then around it is kind of uh, foliage and, and different kind of hunting scene and sort of beasts, lots of Romanesque imagery. Um, well, we started with uh, chip carving and, um, and uh, with that I, I, I combined it with a joinery project which just followed afterwards. Uh, and after that, uh, we started with an acanthus leaf, a very simple one, and it goes on until the end with more difficult projects. So this is a, it's called a capital, and the original is based in Westminster Abbey and I got a plaster piece, a model which was broken halfway through and I carved it um, a little bit from the model but most of it from pictures or photos. Okay so what we're doing here is we're copying a classical bust um, and the way we do this is a, a centuries old technique it's called using a pointing machine. Um, essentially we have three points which we set up in a frame around the bust. And we have our bit of stone here and we have three points in the same place. Then we take this, which is the pointing machine, which is essentially a three-dimensional ruler, and we put it on the bust. And using the needle, we place the needle against the bust. And then we take this over to the piece of stone. And then we carve the stone down until we get to the end of the needle. So we've taken the point here, in 3D space and we transferred it here and then we do that hundreds of times until we hopefully have a perfect copy of the original. This student won this year's Taylor Pierce Drawing Prize. Her drapery drawing shows the relationship between the drape and the figure, her interest in how drawing can 
express and describe the qualities of three-dimensional drapery. When they carve, they're effectively drawing into the stone, thinking about planes, curvilinear surfaces, just as they would if they were drawing on a two-dimensional surface. So today we're doing lettering, which is something we do once a week on this course, and it's because we're required in the real world to do headstones and inscriptions for churches and stuff. Yeah. Hi, I'm just doing a bit of lettering in stone. Um, I'm a woodcarver normally, but I'm having a go at the stone art of lettering. Um, this is a piece of slate, and uh, this is my design. On Thursdays we do letter carving as part of the curriculum, and I'm carving a letter M based on an illuminated letter from an Anglo-Saxon manuscript. So this is one of my third year projects, um, and the idea behind it was to basically build upon the past three years of work. So I've taken things that we've studied before, so I've got uh, drapery, um, I've got ornament, architecture and anatomy and I'm uh, using a renaissance style uh, which we've studied to put them all together. Um, so initially I uh, made a clay model uh, using lots of research and created a plaster version and from the plaster I'm copying it onto the stone over here um, and it's being carved in quite low relief so although it looks quite deep it's actually only four centimeters deep. I have a background in contemporary sculpture, but I've always had a passion for classical sculpture. Um, and for me, contemporary sculpture is perhaps more about uh, ideas and concepts, um, whereas I've always been very interested in creating my own work. So for me, I really lacked the skills which I wanted um, to create the sculpture that I'm, I'm passionate about. So for me, City and Guilds is, is really the best of both worlds. It allows me to build upon the um, ideas and concepts that I have, but frame that within a classical framework, um, picking up um, skills and techniques which are thousands of years old, um, and hopefully will form the backbone of my practice going forwards. <laughs> 